uncles. I'm somebody's uncle. <laughs> Grab a blanket, turn off your lights for true scary horror stories about that one guy. That. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Finally getting this off my chest. I can't help the way I write. I like to include as many details as I can, and it usually ends up creating a huge wall of text. I'm not going to provide anything else, so sorry in advance if that's what you're looking for. You should probably hit the back button right now if you can. Thanks to whoever decides to read this. As a long time lurker, I finally mustered up the guts to share some incidences that occurred in my life that not many people know about. Thank you Let's Not Meet for all your stories and giving me the courage to finally talk about this in detail. I know, what happened to me is pretty minor compared to most of the stories I've heard on here, but it still traumatized me. My memory of everything feels like Swiss cheese, but I'll try my best to remember everything. I think the first time I met my uncle was when my family moved to Michigan. I had to have been around six or seven years old at the time. Just to clarify, he was a first cousin of my mom's side of the family. My mom's side of the family is enormous, and back in those days, we used to gather every weekend for the adults to eat and drink, and for the kids to play and hang out. It was during one of these gatherings when I met him. I remember he smelled like smoke, and his fingers were cold when they pinched my cheeks. I greeted him just like I was supposed to and ran off to play with my brothers and cousins. He was really funny and nice, just like the rest of my aunts and uncles. Some things I think you should know before I continue on with this story is that my family and culture in general is a lot more touchy-feely than your average family, and there was a more traditional way of raising kids. It's not uncommon at all for adults and kids alike to be patting butts, kissing and pinching cheeks and hugging. It's just one of the main ways we show our affections for each other. When someone older than you is speaking to you, you have to address them in a specific way. You always show your elders respect and always listen to them. If they are older, you are at their mercy. So anyways, back to the story. I would soon find out that my uncle was not like the rest of my family. There was a first instance I can remember that occurred shortly after we moved. I was playing outside in the front lawn with my brothers. They had moved on to playing tag or something like that. And I was a couple of feet away just derping around. My uncle pulled up to the curb and got out of his car. He had this thing where every time I saw him, he would kneel down and ask me to kiss his cheek. This was normal at least the first few times it was. I think my mom was looking for an apartment for us to move into because we were living with a couple aunts and uncles and their kids in a smaller condo at the time. My uncle asked me if I could go with him and show him where the apartment was. At the time, I didn't think it was strange for him to ask me that. I guess because I always wanted to make people happy as a kid. Looking back, it makes no sense. How the fuck would a six to seven year old kid no directions to an apartment building multiple cities away? I ended up saying no, sorry. I was able to go back to my brother's when he grabbed my arm and said I should go with him anyways to keep him company. I thought I should go with him because he's my uncle. He's an adult and like I said, you always listen to your elders. By the way, nowadays I fucking hate my family. My extended family, that is. So we're driving and I'm in the front passenger seat. I don't remember anything we talked about or how long the ride was. I don't even remember where exactly he took me or where he dropped me off. I just remember him reaching over and rubbing my legs, which was normal, I think. But then he put his hand down my pants which was not normal. I laughed, thinking he was just kidding with me and tried moving his hand, but he just shoved harder until he was right there, between my legs. I don't remember what happened after that, I just remember thinking, I don't think this is right. I don't think uncles do this. I didn't tell anyone about what happened, because I thought it was a one-time thing. My stupid child brain saw it as him having an off day. The following visits would consist of his ritual making me kiss him on the cheek, except he started to grab my head and kiss me on the lips. This was not normal. It was way too sloppy and wet and forceful. No one ever forced me to kiss them. He would grab my butt whenever he saw me, harder and rougher than anyone normally would. It seemed like whenever I got within arm's length, he would reach out and grab me to run his hands all over me. When other people were around, he would hug me and put me on his lap, but leave one of his hands between my legs. It was highly unsettling and made me feel very horrible. I didn't know whether to run and cry, start punching him or tell someone. A big part of me knew what he was doing was bad, but the other part of me thought I was the bad one for not listening to him. Sometimes the way you're brought up can really mess with you. 
Fast forward a couple years later, when I'm in fifth grade or middle school, I don't think I'd seen him in a while, and at this point, I was home with one of my brothers, eating dinner in the kitchen. My brother was playing games on the computer in his room. Someone knocked at the front door, so I went to move the curtain to see who it was. My uncle stood alone, smiling at me. I was overcome with a hodgepodge of panic, fear, and disgust. I reluctantly let him in. He made me kiss him and grab my butt while I tried to pull my face away. I waited for him to sit down, then took the seat farthest from him. I think he asked me random questions about school and where everyone was. I kept my answer short, even had a light spritz of hatred with him. I wanted to scream, GET OUT OF HERE! WHY ARE YOU HERE?! He asked me to make him some food, which consisted of a microwaved hot dog. I wanted to leave the kitchen and go into my brother's room, but he kept talking to me. I was scared the entire time trying to figure out what might happen. To my surprise, after I don't know how much time had passed, he got up and announced, he was leaving. I felt the relief wash over me as I watched him put on his shoes. He put his hands on the doorknob, and I walked closer, getting ready to close and lock the door once he left. As I walked towards him, he turned around quickly and grabbed me with both hands. He half bear hugged me, grabbed my butt and held me against him as he stuck his tongue in my mouth and positioned me against the door. I had no idea what had happened. All I could do was register the fact that I was in a very bad spot, and my mouth smelled and tasted like smoke. I tried escaping his hold but he only pushed against me and squeezed harder. I felt his hand go underneath my underwear, and his fingers started to move. I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I wanted to scream for my brother, but his mouth was covering mine. After what seemed like forever, he stopped and let me go. I backed several feet away from him. He brought his fingers up to his nose and closed his eyes. Then the sick bastard smiled, said goodbye, and left. Several more years passed. I was in high school, and I remember there were many occasions where my mom told me he wanted to offer to pick me up from school or take me to run errands to help out. I would instantly become furious and demand that I be left out of the equation. These were the rare times I would raise my voice and scream at my mom. She would freak out on me and wouldn't understand why I was acting the way I was, but I could never bring myself to tell her why. I just felt like there was a huge boulder on top of me, preventing me from screaming from the top of my lungs that he had violated me, and I want to gouge his fucking eyes out. I later found out that he had done similar things to several of my cousins and some of their friends, and even to my brothers. We never talked about it in detail together. It was just an unspoken known thing that he was touching us inappropriately. There was a time where one of my cousins and I finally told an aunt. She told our moms. They didn't believe us. My aunt told us never to be alone with him again. The older I got, the angrier I became. I hated him so hard. Every time I saw him, I would walk in the opposite direction to avoid him. I'm 23 years old now, and sometimes he'll show up at other people's houses. I still get panicky and frightened when I see him. I think it's time I end this story. As I mentioned in the beginning, a few people in my life know about what happened, but not the full details. Spelling out the details for the first time has been pretty emotionally and mentally laborious. Thank you so much for allowing me to get this off my chest, and I hope this can help someone in some small way. Creepy Uncle I've been reading this subreddit for a lot and never knew if my story fit, but after reading a few similar ones, I thought I might be able to help anybody going through the same thing. Well, my stories are the same as many others. I had an uncle, by marriage to my father's sister, who was an alcoholic. My mother was a single mother and worked 24-7 to make ends meet, so I had to be babysat by this uncle every now and again because my mom couldn't afford daycare. I actually blocked out a lot of things he did until a few years ago, when I realized it was not okay. He would do things like make me sit back with my legs up on a lounge chair so he could look up my skirt or my shorts, and he'd say, I can see your panties, or I love your panties. After he said that one time, I called him a pervert, and he got very mad, turning red, and got so close to my face I could smell the beer on his breath. I thought he was going to tear me apart. He went and got some beer instead. Once he made me lie in bed with him and watch a Disney movie with him while he touched my legs very slowly and softly, breathing deeply and gasping, sweating. He would rub himself on me, and as a young kid, I just remember him rubbing on me, making a strange noise, and getting up to go to the bathroom. He also used to give me long hugs and he would make me, as a nine-year-old or something, drink out of a baby's bottle while he watched. He took me for walks and told me he wanted seven wives to kiss and touch all parts of his body. 
and he asked me if I could be one of his wife, if he could kiss my breasts. He would show up at my house when my mom was away and sit and ask me strange questions and if I like a shower for him. As a young child, I didn't understand. I was terrified. I was very young and very scared and did not have a father and figured my mom wouldn't leave me with anyone that wasn't a nice person. I realize now, much later, that he was a very bad man that ruined me in a lot of ways and I often cry about the experiences. But I guess what I'm here to say is that if anyone, family member or not, is doing this, do you tell someone? If I had told someone, it would have stopped. I moved far away, but he's still out there now, and he's never got into trouble. Well, I have to live with nightmares of him masturbating on my leg. Tell someone, don't be afraid. Don't let him ruin you like it ruined me. I hope this post belongs here. I, I just never shared it before. Creepy Uncle Tim I was seven years old when I first met my Uncle Tim from my father's side of the family. Until that point, I never even knew that I had an uncle. I thought I only had aunts. I was so thrilled to meet him. He was so nice and treated me like an angel. I would sit on his lap and he would comb his fingers through my hair, commenting on how beautiful and long it was. I would begin to see Uncle Tim more often since then. He immediately became my favorite out of all my father's siblings. He even told me that I was his favorite too. He would tell me of the same things over and over again, which is how beautiful I was and will be when I'm older, etc. I never got tired of hearing it until one day, I began to feel uneasy about him. He would look at me oddly, almost lustful-like, and rub my back, arms, shoulders, and hair more than a person should. He would kiss my cheek, making me feel uncomfortable, but I didn't have the courage to ask him not to do that anymore. My 14th birthday was the final straw in the kissing. He kissed me on the cheek and told me to kiss his, but right as I was leaning to peck it, he turned his face towards mine, and I ended up kissing his lips. I felt so disgusted by that, and later told my mom that I didn't like him kissing my cheeks. I didn't want her to tell him directly, because I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so she made an announcement to the adults about refraining from touching the younger ones. The touchings calmed down, but then came the camera. Every time we saw my uncle, he had a camera with him and would snap photos of us. He took photos at birthdays, dinners, and when he came over to visit, it was like non-stop, I swear. Once I hit puberty, my breasts began forming. I mean, they were really forming. Once I got to high school, I was carrying D-cups. Everyone noticed, but not to the extent of how much Tim would notice them. If it weren't for his continuous long stares and accidental brushings against them, then I wouldn't have noticed. When I became 16, I became sort of uneasy. My family was invited to my cousin's birthday party and my uncle was there and of course he had his camera strapped around his neck he began taking his pictures and he would take them when the camera was facing me he would do this throughout the day and i became irritated and told him shouldn't you be taking pictures of the birthday girl if you take another picture of me i'm gonna take that camera and smash it i said something along those lines he denied taking pictures of me but i wasn't stupid i knew he was i would complain about tim to my parents a lot my mother thought he was a bit on the strange side, but my dad always supported him and ignored my complaints, stating I was being overdramatic and misinterpreting him. He said that Tim only thought of me as his daughter. He would basically guilt trip me. I began thinking I was being too harsh on him, so I tried pushing aside my negative thoughts of him. That is, until the day I went to his new home. He had just bought a new house and through a little housewarming, he and my dad went to go buy beer and as they were gone, I checked out the house. I made it into his bedroom and saw that his computer was on. I decided to check my Facebook on it, and once I exited out of the browser, I noticed a folder on his desktop. The cover of the folder was an image of a girl, and that girl happened to be... me. I clicked the folder, and what I saw made my stomach drop. All the pictures in it were of me. These pictures dated all the way back when he first got his camera. They were pictures of me at every event we were at, even at my cousin's birthday party. The time he claimed he didn't take photos of me, they were all of me. What made me so frightened was the other pictures of me that weren't at these events. They were pictures of me outside of school, at parks with my friends, etc. He was freaking stalking me. I literally wanted to throw up. I was so disgusted and scared at the same time. He had more folders, 
but I was trying to look through them, afraid there would be pictures of me nude. I was beginning to feel paranoid that he might have placed hidden cameras in my house or something like that. I rushed to my mom quickly and told her about the pictures. She saw them for herself and was horrified. Once my dad and uncle returned, my mother had a talk with my dad. He denied that his brother would do something like that, but we had the proof. We took him into the room and revealed the files to him at that moment. He didn't say a word as he looked through them. He said he would have a talk with him and told us to go home. We did. Once home, I was afraid to even be there because I felt that there were cameras watching me all the time. I really was paranoid and to this day, I sometimes get paranoid about things like that. My dad came home a few hours later and appeared sad. He said he made Tim delete every single picture of me and to never see us again. For the next few months, my dad was a bit depressed. He was close with my uncle. He was like his role model since he was young. He was deeply saddened by what he did. He would even try to convince himself that Tim wasn't a creep to which I would get angry by. I understood that he really, really admired his brother, but it was time to realize what type of person he really was. As the years passed, no one acknowledged Tim as part of the family, not even my extended family. I thought it was because of the pictures of me, but many years later, I found out it wasn't the only reason why. My mom finally told me that once my dad had a talk with Tim, my uncle became angry. He threw a fit and caught the attention of the others at the party. They wondered what the fuss was about, and my dad reluctantly told them. They were upset and all of them left. A few days later, my cousin Ron, who was in middle school at the time, confessed to his parents that Uncle Tim had made them touch each other. They took him to court, and he was sentenced to five years in prison. He only touched them one time, but that is still sick. I've never heard or seen Uncle Tim again, and I surely do not want to, ever. Thankfully, my dad did get better and had apologized for taking his brother's side over ours. He, too, never wants to see him again. It's crazy how people close and dear to you can turn out to be... creeps. Uncle from Hell before I start, I'm Russian, so my English isn't that great, so if I confuse you guys with my sentences and grammar, I hope I can answer it better in the comments. I was struggling whether or not I want to post this story, because I'm still disturbed and shaken up to this day, ever since my experience with my uncle. I grew up in a wealthy family. Both of my parents had enough money ever since I was born to get into the best schools in Russia and all over the world. And during my earliest years, I remember going to many places during my summer breaks with my parents, visiting so many places, and to this day, those are my fondest memories. My parents had steady jobs and they were mostly happy. My father was never fond of my mother's family except her parents. My mom had two siblings, a sister who passed away two years ago and a brother. Both of these people didn't care about my mother, especially my uncle and both my grandparents from my mother's side weren't too fond of them either. My mother tried hard pleasing them about everything, lending them money even though they would never pay their debts amongst many other things. My uncle, my mother's brother, really wanted to kick out both my grandparents since he wanted their house even though he already had a big house himself and that house belonged to my mother after my grandparents died. He really wanted to get that house, but my grandfather was the owner of the property so my uncle couldn't do anything about it. Both of my grandparents died in the same year. My grandfather died because his left side was completely paralyzed, and he was catatonic for a week before he woke up and the last words to this day resonated deeply with me. He told my uncle that he will never get what he wanted because he was a greedy bastard, but for going back to that same state. A couple of hours later, my grandfather passed away on that couch. My grandmother was one of the most sensitive, kind-hearted people I've ever met, and her health deteriorated really after my grandfather passed and she died in the same year. My mother was a very cheerful and hardworking woman, became really depressed, and battled breast cancer the next year. Thankfully, she is still alive to this day, but she is still not the same as she used to be. My mother stopped going to work because she couldn't take the stress, and my father tried to help her as much as possible, but he couldn't. They tried to open up a business, but for some reason, they listened to my cousin, who was 17 years older than me, and knew a lot about people that could help us with the business. My father was hesitant at first, but my mother convinced him to do it. My father invested a shit ton of money for decorating and opening up the business, 
and sold all the other houses in which we had so that they could really pour all their efforts into this business. My cousin was heavily involved and influenced my father in all his investments from opening up and repairing the business. By the time he finally opened the business and started working on it, it's all we had in order to survive. I was in high school while my sister started going to college. Then the worst possible thing happened to my family. Our business didn't went as planned and it closed down the shop. He tried selling the shop and the property to someone else, but he couldn't for the longest time. We were broke and we put our houses as mortgage to some loan shark for money. We couldn't go anywhere and things were going pretty bad. I never told my friends or anyone else because I was afraid that they wouldn't hang out with me for some goddamn reason. My uncle had my grandparents' house all to himself and he didn't want us to come there and would ignore my mom's calls even though in my grandfather's will and said the house belonged to my mother only. But my uncle put a fence so that no one could get in and we were broke. We didn't have any money to even call some men to help us move there and we couldn't sue my uncle because we had no money at all. My parents panicked and then the worst week in my entire life happened. We left our house, unable to pay back our loan with the most things now belong to that loan shark. I spent a whole week homeless in the winter with my parents in the freezing cold. I spent at least two days at some friends' places, but I knew they were uncomfortable with me and my family staying there for God knows how long, and I remember my friend's parents out loud told us we couldn't stay long. Those alone were the most painful days of my entire life, and I'm shaking as hell while typing this. My mother tried to kill herself a couple times, and I tried to stop her with my sister and my father. My childhood best friend at the time, who is now my girlfriend by the name of Olga, was out of the country with her family, and there was no one at her home, so I couldn't contact her or anything like that. No one wanted to help my family, until I got a call from Olga, and I remember I told her I need somewhere to stay, and I remember I never begged her as much as I did in that, in that part of my life, and she let me and my family in. I remember she agreed and told me that he and her dad will come and help us move. Ten minutes passed, and I see her and her dad stopping at where we were, helping us pack our bags and things we had in the car, but he had to go back and forth three times so he could fit everything in his car. My father stayed there with the last of the bags until he hopped on also. Olga talked with her parents and they let us stay as long as we wanted to. My parents were really depressed at that point and were just eating and sleeping those days. Olga's father had a close friend who was a lawyer and he begged him to look into the case with my, with my uncle and my grandparents' house. He agreed to look into the situation. Thankfully, I stayed at Olga's place for six months and I remember we grew closer than we had ever before and started dating. We still are. During these six months, I continued high school and my sister continued college. Olga's parents were lending us money as much as they could, and I could never repay them for how much they helped me and my family. The lawyer who was a close friend of Olga's father told us he won't be able to give my grandparents' house to my mother. The judge decided that, on behalf of my grandfather's will, my uncle ignored everything that was written there, and he had to let us have the house. He was forced to give up the house and we moved in there. Now you might think, this is where it gets better. Well, it doesn't, since my uncle tried every single moment to make us homeless again, but we had no proof. He hired some people to rob us while we were sleeping, someone who threw a rock at our windows, etc. My, my grandparents' house was on, on a more isolated part than some of the other houses, and not too many people were passing by our house. My sister was once almost assaulted by some men near our house, but thankfully she was able to get away. My father hired a private detective to monitor our house 24 hours a day with the help of Olga's father to catch my uncle. They photographed him breaking into our house for some reason instead of hiring other people to break inside. My parents were out with me while me and my sister were at college that day. I started college at that point. We called the police and showed our pictures of him breaking in. He was charged for breaking and entering amongst many other things and he had to spend over 15 years in jail. My cousins and my aunt were trying to contact us, calling us the worst names possible, that we should have died in the freezing cold, and that we will pay for everything that we did ever since then. We haven't heard anything from them, and thank fucking God for that. Now that I finished college, I was able to open up a business with some friends of mine I met through college, and I'm starting to get good money, though it's a far cry from what my parents had before. I hope I never and hear about my uncle and his family ever again.